promise I'm not making it up. This just keeps on happening. Welcome back to another video. And here at the Disker. And would you believe me if I told you we have ourselves another tire hub out. Oh, that's annoying. Well, gotta have to fix that one too, you know. That's just absolutely great. Yay, there's the, what is that now? Okay, we fixed now one, two, three, one on the outside, four, five. We fixed five of them now out of eight. So what, we need three more and we can fix all of them? There you go, that's, that's one way to do it. But yeah, besides that being broken now, we also have a bearing over here. This bearing right here on these discs. Can't quite tell, but this bearing right here is also broken. That needs to be fixed. This was not turning anymore. It was just piling up a bunch of dirt right there. So gonna need to fix that. But other than that, it was working fine. We also got ourselves this lamp plane here. We started using it. We are making this whole area here flatter. There was a big washout here and everything. So we kind of have been doing a lot of work here, pulling more dirt in, dirt into this. There was a, like a big valley right here. I can't quite tell on camera. Camera doesn't do height justice of any sort, but it was a big dip right here. We kind of flattened it out between these two circles right here, way over there was another big valley and we flattened that out too. We still need to do a lot more work with this lamp plane. We have ourselves not a maintainer, but it's just a big blade that you can use. I don't know where it is. It might be at our other farm down south. I don't know where it is, but we might have to get that thing down here to pull a lot more dirt to close that big washout trench. It was, it was a road to get around the field, but whenever it rains it, over time, it slowly got worse and worse and worse. Now it was like a five foot difference. So we flattened it out. So now we just got to fix this again. I'm gonna take off the tire, uh, go, to, uh, go to town tomorrow morning. It's three o'clock. So by the time I got all this taken apart, Stores are going to be closed because I need to know what I need for that there. So I'm just going to take the tire off of there, take the hub off. And then I can raise it up. That way I can get to that bearing there. And then I'll have to get myself a big pipe wrench, which I believe it's in the shop. But a big pipe wrench. There's some very massive nuts that are on here that you got to screw off. So these are always very, very tough. Usually, usually takes one or two people with a big cheater pipe on the pipe wrench, but we'll see how tight it's t uh, tightened together. But I'll fix that. Tomorrow morning I'll get the bearings and whatnot. So I'm gonna get to work and start taking stuff apart. I just got the hub off of here and I looked at the spindle and it looks like it's gonna be okay. There's a little bit of a messed up area on the bottom of it, but I think that's gonna still be okay. I got the hub in the shop now. And look at that, it's starting to sprinkle a little. Oh, nice, I like it. Anyways, gonna clean off the hub first. Once I got the hub all cleaned up and all the old old races out of there and everything, then I'm gonna start taking this thing apart. And I just got this thing all cleaned up now. I uh, buy and as I'm looking at here, it is a little bit worn out right here on the top ridge right here. And if I turn it around, it's also kind of messed up here. You can probably tell that it's kind of chipped off right here. I'm not quite sure. If I want to reuse it or not, or just buy a new hub, I'm not quite sure yet. Talk to my dad and see what he thinks. But that's there. I'm gonna. It's still sprinkling a little bit. Uh, probably didn't even rain a tenth, but uh, it's slightly sprinkling. So I'll still go outside and I'll uh, 
fix that or I'll start taking that apart that other bearing. But I might as well mention this is the pipe wrench that I will be using. You can tell that this is not your normal size pipe wrench. This is what your normal size pipe wrench looks like. And this is its big old mama. You can see it's a whole lot bigger and a lot beefier. So we've broken these in the past by replacing those bearings on the disker. So we bought ourselves a bigger one for big, big things like this or for big situations like this. So I'm gonna use this one and then I'm gonna see if I can find myself a cheater pipe that I can fit on the end of here. Something like this. This is what I mean by a cheater pipe. So you just stick this guy in here. So now instead of having a short handle, now I have a very longer handle. So I have a lot more leverage over here now than I would normally. So this is what I'll be using. Yeah, you could say that was pretty tight. Now I just gotta remember how it was on here, that way later whenever we put it back together, I'm not messing anything up and it's exactly the way it was. So, I think, all right, just taking a quick glance at it, and I'll remember. And as you can see, we got everything all apart right now. We got the old bearing here. And yeah, you can tell that it's definitely bad. Because you can see in there, you can see all the powder and dry cracks and everything. So now we just got to take this snap ring off, hit out the bearing, and replace it with a new one. Nice. Meanwhile, cleaning that out, got the old bearing right here. Gonna put in that new one. Hey, what are we doing? Watching the rain. We're just sitting here watching the rain. Enjoying it while it's here. Nice little, this is an old tote. Put some old scrap metal in there. Kind of stopped raining. So I'm gonna go see how much we got. I know it didn't rain much, but I'm pretty sure we probably got maybe like a 10th or so. Nice, two tenths. Two tenths of our, that's gonna really cool things down and make everything just, just a little bit more moist. But we're just gonna finish this tomorrow. It's past six already, so I'm gonna go home, eat some supper, come back tomorrow. Okay. That, that one goes on this side. Oh, it goes on that thing. Yeah, right there. Okay, I'm 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift this up. Can you slide them all together a little bit? Do it either way, I'm guessing. Yeah. Because one side looks like it's the wrong way. You know, there's no right and wrong way. Alright, so far we got everything back together already. We just need to tighten it yet. Got the new blades on there, each spacer in between. Got this bearing back on it. This was the the one that was still good. We just put that one back on there. We put a new one in that one. So that one is a new. Now we just gotta tighten this one yet here. And once it's tight enough, then we can put a cotter pin right through there for it'll stay and not move. And then we should be good to go. Well, as my GoPro decided to cut me off and die on me, uh, what I was gonna say is we were not going to finish this today because we were going to do something tomorrow. But as you just saw, we just barely did put it all back together. We did all the hard stuff today, all the heavy lifting because tomorrow I might be here all by myself and that'll be a little bit difficult to do with one person. So we, my dad just helped me put that all back together. Well, I just need to tighten it tomorrow whenever I get there. But tomorrow morning I gotta get the parts for the one wheel bearing. And then we're gonna head to a different field and fix what you would call, uh, not the upspout, but the knee or the elbow right on top of the pivot. Apparently it's leaking and it's quite bad, so we need to fix that tomorrow morning. That might take who knows till who knows how long, maybe till after lunch sometime. And I'll be able to come back here, uh, tighten that that nut on the disker, and I'll be able to finish dissing around the fields. So see y'all tomorrow. But for you it's gonna be like a second, but yeah, see you tomorrow. Well, the pivot's back up and running now. No more leak. Didn't really have much time to film it because we were kind of busy. A lot of people here probably wouldn't have seen what we were doing, but pretty much just that elbow up there, it goes down to right there. And it was leaking a lot of water out on the top and here on the bottom. So we just put a new one in there, put a new sleeve, up. well, we reused the same sleeve, we put the sleeve back on there fixed it all and now there's no it's not leaking so now we're good this is all nice and tight now but scrapers are scraping a little bit too much but that'll be okay but it's at least tight now and fixed now just for the wheel bearing yet am i recording myself or am i recording you now you're recording yourself oh no There's Conley, my son, working on that wheel bearing. Putting the race in there. Really struggling about that. Look at him. Look at him. Hammering that. That wasn't so hard. You did it. And if you're wondering what you just saw my dad doing, well, pretty much what he did, he just tacked on this hub cap, this dust cap right here, because the hub itself was 
just a little bit broken here on the edge and the dust cap didn't want to stay in there so we just put the dust cap on there tacked it on the next time that we're going to use this we're probably just going to get a new hub anyway since it was bad but for now we just tacked it on and called it good and now i'm ready to go again well almost ready that little blinking light right there is kind of annoying that's telling me i need to go fill up some def so diesel tank is right there with the def tank in the front of it uh, I'm hoping there's still a little bit of death in there, so I'm gonna see how much there's left. Maybe it'll give me like half a bar or something. Maybe full. Who knows how much is in there, but uh, I'll just need a little bit to finish the job. Well, never mind. Looks like I had enough to give me a full tank. I like it, but I do know that we are almost out of def. So one of these days we are going to have to get another tote of it just so we can always refill these tanks on our diesel tank. So back to work. tall corn a little bit of a yellow spot right here but further out in the field it's still uh, still really tall you can tell as I'm getting closer here to the pivot I guess you probably can't really tell on camera as well but the corn is touching the trash rods on the pivot so if I get a little closer here I can show you yeah the camera cannot, cannot pick it up there's too much dust and it's too far away. So if I get closer here, you can tell it's pretty much almost fair. Well, actually not almost, but it's really close to touching this bar right here. This corn is getting pretty tall. It's not like this everywhere, but it is in quite a few spots. I'm 6'6", six, six, and I can barely, I can't even touch the top of that. So the, this corn is pretty tall. It's amazing. Looks really good. There's a little bit of a yellow spot here, here by these short rows. You can tell it's getting a little shorter now. But other than that, this corner right here is looking pretty good. We tried fixing the yellow spot, but I'm trying to find my way back out of here. Keep moving. But, anyways, you can tell that it's quite a bit yellow right here. We tried fixing it, but there's nothing we could do. We sprayed a lot of things on there like iron and zinc, stuff like that. But it's not, it's not a big area. It's only like one acre right here that's kind of low and yellow. It's not really going to do much, but that field on the other hand is a lot yellower. But it'll be okay in the end. It sucks, but it, it is the way it is, so yeah, gotta get back to work. While I'm here disking around this field, might as well show y'all what happened here. I don't know if you can tell, but right here the corn is extremely small. And you might think, well, it looks like disease or something like that, but nope. If you would believe me. The neighbors they have some cows and the cows have been tearing down the fence and they've been running over here to our corn and they've been eating just a lot of it they've they've chowed down like so many acres just on the edge here they'll just walk like 20 30 feet on the edge of the field they'll eat what they want all the leaves good stuff whatever you can see there's big spots here where they just they ate up pretty much everything everything's gone there it's not going to yield anything there are there by the short rows there it's a lot worse but it's it's slowly getting dealt with there i think they're building a new fence right now as they as we as i speak but i'll get to that end i'll show you how bad that looks there too but it, it'll be okay in the end 
uh, it'll still make a yield, so it'll, it'll be okay. Yeah, it's a lot smaller here. I'm just folding up right now. I'm done with this field now. Well, actually, I gotta do a little bit on that side yet, but I'm pretty much done. And then I'm gonna be moving to a new spot. But as you can see, they've eaten a lot more out here because you can't see them from this distance, but the cows are actually right there. We're getting really close here now. I feel like they're kind of, kind of wanting more corn again, but you can tell that it's a lot smaller here. It's also a little bit of a yellow spot. It's a little bit different soil right here. But they've eaten, there's a big area here that they already ate from all this corn, I guess because it's so close to this fence right here. But this, there's a lot of corn that's gone here. This is not going to yield much, but like I said, it's okay. It'll, it'll be fine. We'll make do with what we have. Off to the next one. And done for the day. Thanks for watching, guys.